welcome to Monkey Island Madness. Um, this is a live show taped over at Ustream TV. This is impromptu. Um, there is live chat, so I'm talking to a bunch of ladies and I'm answering questions and whatever. Um, come to a live show, they're really fun. The ladies in chat are a kick. But today I'm going to go ahead and show how. I put these books together. The last two videos I've put up on YouTube or that are on Ustream were me creating the paper, weaving the paper, and today I'm going to go ahead and make the, the little traveler style notebook cover. Some of the ladies wanted to see it. Hi Suzanne. Um, so I've already um, woven the paper um, and cut it to size. So today I'm just going to assemble the book. But before I do that, um, I'm going to go ahead. Thank you. Yep, I saw that. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday. I thought I'd gotten what I wanted on Amazon, but it was the wrong stuff. So I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday in the jewelry department and bought some elastic to use on them. Um, it's not as heavy as what you would find on a real Midori or a leather traveler's notebook, but it'll work fine for these. And if you don't like it, change it out. I mean, you can change out your elastics on your books really easy. So, yeah, I got that at Hobby Lobby. I got, yeah, so far it's working great. great. Ratatouille helped me with my setup on my, um, camera and it's working great and he's getting ready to go for his treatment so mm. Mm. love you too honey be careful All call right. me when you head home okay anyway show. say hi to Ratatouille and bye to Ratatouille he's out of here <laughs> and then the other thing I got um, was some Tim Holtz it's some of the new washi tape, and it's all words, black and white words, which I like. Yeah, you can take that with if you want. You don't need to. You just need to be there at noon. Anyway, they're just words, wander, journey, discover. Can you take it? You don't need to, no. If you, I mean, you can if you want. I don't care. No, you don't have to take anything today, huh? There's something else to look after. Yeah, no, you don't need it. I throw them away. All right. All right. Bye, hon. Have a way fun. Love you, too. Safe travels, Roberts. The ladies are saying, you big loser. Do what? Safe travels, you big loser. All right. Catch you later. Bye, hon. Bye. All right. So I got some Tim Holtz washi tape. I got, um, and I used my coupon on this, so it was like five bucks. And then they had all their paper studio stuff on sale. So I bought these real thin washies because I don't have any of these. I ha think I have one of them. So, yeah. So I've got that. That and that. And that was my haul yesterday. But what I really went for, these were impulse buys. Washi tape is always impulse buys. But what I went for was the... Um, Elastic cording. And you get that, um, I know, I need more washi, like I need a flipping hole in the head. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, what I really wanted was this colorful elastic. So I just wish it was a little bit heavier, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And then I don't know if you guys ever go into um, Dollar Tree, but the other day I was in Dollar Tree. And look at, they had emoji washi tape. Now how cute is that? It doesn't stick very good, but now that is too cute. So, yeah, for one buck, you had to buy that. And that is all my new stuff. That's it. That and my boom arm for the, the camera, which so far I'm liking a lot. Now you've seen all my new stuff, let's get on down the road. Okay. Midori's or Traveler's Notebooks can come in any size, any size at all. I got this one not very long ago, um, and I love the size of it. So, I determined the size of these because I like the size of this one so well. 
Um, it fits in your purse. It's just so nice. So that's how I determined. Look at how the black changed the color on the camera. That's really weird. Hmm. Anyway, that's how I determined the size of this. Because these pages were about 8.5 by 11 when I wove them. So based on that, I cut them to 8 and 3 quarters inch um, width. And this is going to be the, the way it folds. Okay, so that was eight and three quarters. And what I actually did was, if I was a little bit off, I went to the next um, strip and cut it on a strip. And six and three quarters this way. And again, if the, the measurement is off a little bit, um, I just went to the next um, full strip of paper. So I didn't end up with a partial. But this one just by chance came out exactly six and three quarters. This one is almost almost nine inches, but I don't really care. Okay. She spent five hundred dollars on the new Timmy stuff. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay. So on this one that's already put together my spine is one inch. Okay, I'm going to stay consistent with that. I'm going to keep my spine about one inch. So on this one, since it's nine inches almost, I'll go ahead and do, and I'll do all my measurements on the back. I'm going to figure my center, which is, I'm just going to say about four and a half. And then do my inch either side of it. And it's actually going to fold at um, these papers anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and mark this. You're not going to see it at the end, but I'll just go ahead and draw the line. That's why when you're weaving this, try and keep it as straight as you can, because the weaving is going to impact um, where your folds are, where your cuts are. Um, I suppose you could leave a portion of a strip. I just didn't want to. Okay, so, and then I was talking about, and it may have, I may have been talking about it before I started recording, then I started talking about allowing some relief, because this is going to end up being three plies of paper product. You, it'll bunch up if you don't allow for some relief. So that's why I don't just slap an entire piece of um, chipboard on here. The chipboard board is what I'm going to cut to allow for the relief, and you'll see that here in a minute. Okay. So I know now I know I need a piece of chipboard, and this is um, the faux leather. There's a tape on it. Um, I'm going to use this as filler to give the whole book a little bit more. Um, substance. So I know I need a piece of chipboard an inch by six and three quarters. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm working in the dark here to keep the camera happy. And I'm going to use a white pen to do my marks so I can see them. Okay. So one inch. by six and three quarters. Okay, and my the six and three quarter way, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to um, cut it just slightly short, just slightly, not much, um, because I don't want. Well, I could actually go bigger. Let me think about this. I'm going to go six and three quarters. I'm actually going to go seven, and then whatever hangs off. Um, I'll trim it at the very end. I think that's the way I'll do that. Rather than cutting real tight to make everything fit, I think I'm going to cut big and then trim it back after it's assembled. Right? Right. Okay, so I will cut my one inch way first. And I didn't put a new blade in, and I might be real sorry for that, so I may stop and take time to do that. 
And then on this one, I'll just use my, um, I don't care how straight it is. It's not that vital. Because um, remember, it's only going to be as straight as the overall cover. All right, so there's my piece for the spine. Okay, then, and I've just found it's easier to, to cut to fit. Um, rather than pre-cut. I mean, you can. You can pre-cut your pieces. I'm not going to. Okay. And then I'm going to move all the way over, believe it or not, to the next um, full strip of the weaving and measure from there over. And that is... Where is my inch? There it is. Um right at, I'll go ahead and do two pieces four inches. Okay. I will get a new blade here in just a second, CB. I'm going to do two pieces four inches. Because I'll trim it back down um, after the book is assembled. Because on the edges, what I did on Eileen's, and it looks okay, Eileen, um, it makes it a little bit thick, but I just went ahead and painted it um, one of the colors. And see how you get that little gap there? It's the nature of the beast. You can shove glue down in there and stick that back together. And there, I need to do that there. So... So, and on this cover, um, I have already put matte medium on this side of it, and that's what has glued it together. And then I also glued along these edges. Like this one, I, I should have glued these pieces, and I probably will take time to do that here in just a minute. Because um, you got to remember, this is just paper. It's, it's not like leather. It's not going to... Um, you know, be incredibly durable. And actually, I could leave this the full size and I'll trim it off at the end. And that's just excess. I'll save it and use it for something else or trash it later. Yours is perfect. Okay. All right. I am going to, now the cuts are going to be more critical, so I'm going to go ahead and get um, a new blade. Ooh, and I don't have any paper here. I never just throw a blade away. I always put it in something. And tape it shut. So I haven't heard from Joycey yet. And generally, when you don't hear from Joycey on stream days, that means she is streaming. You only hear from her if she isn't, so. Oh, and I need to show you guys those papers from the other day. I can't remember. I think it was Sophia had suggested laying a... Um, stencil on top of the wet magical paper and it worked pretty good not real good but pretty good I'll show you here in a minute I think I grabbed it okay so are you following me so far you guys Joycey is called the frugal eclectic I believe and is that right, Eileen? Um, Eileen can put a, a link in um, if and she wants. Okay, so this is how it's going to end up being. There's a little bit of relief in between the pieces of chipboard. That's how it'll end up being glued together. Alrighty, and before I do that, because that's going to be the next, I'm going to glue the ends of that, but that's going to be the next 
um, step. All right, here's here's that paper that we made the other day. I really like this this paper. It's really really pretty. And this is where I laid the stencil. So it worked out pretty good. I like it. I like it the really light parts. So yeah, that's how that worked. We made some pretty sheets the other day. And then this is where we put the pan pastel through the through the stencil. And it appears to me as though when I sprayed it with the magicals, it really set the the pan pastels. I can't move the, the pan pastels. So that's kind of cool too. So those were our experiments from the other day. Now I have more junk to put away <laughs> or to find a home for. Yeah, I suspect Joycey will be streaming. So let me take just a quick minute and glue this down. At the end of the day, I'm going to be happy I did it. Um, come on, glue. You were working great the other day. And I'm just putting a little blob of glue under each one, and then I'll smush them down here in a minute. And then I'll do a, I should have, and I guess you guys are just going to have to watch. Because I wasn't prepared to come on this early. But that's okay. I'm good. I'm all good. I got one side glued the other day, but I didn't get this back side glued. And I'm just using fast grab tacky glue. Yeah, I like it with the pan pastel a lot too. So, and that's a good thing because you know I, somebody said at Dee Dee's today, um, Dee Dee was putting magicals on seashells. And if if you're watching this on YouTube and and you're not aware of Dee Dee, her name is Dee Dee Willingham Inkwell. She's on Ustream as Coffee and Art in the Morning. And um, she did magicals on seashells, and that was very cool. I hadn't thought about doing them on something like that, but they worked great. They were beautiful. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you can find more ways to find your or use your products, good on you. I love finding new ways to use my products, so... All right, it looks like this side is glued. So, oh, this edge isn't. I'm going to have to just take the time and do it, you guys, cuz I want I cuz this is going to be a giveaway one and I want whoever gets it to get a good product, you know. The the glue that I'm going to put on to hold the um and some of these are stuck pretty well from the matte medium on the front. Yeah, I want whoever gets it to get a nice thing, you know. I don't want to be junky. And the matte medium will hold it really well. It really will. This may be overkill, so shoot me. Hi Elizabeth, hi Beth, Kiki, anybody else I've missed, pack or die. Alright, and this edge seems to be stuck real well, so cool, 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 cool. Alright, I'm going to, this glue is really, really thick, really thick. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is get just some basic Elmer's PVA white glue um, to glue the um, faux leather down.
And right now, I suspect with um, back to school supplies out, that you can get this like Elmer's school glue for no money. They normally do like the glue and some of their products uber uber cheap. So that's all I'm going to use. Um, and so that I don't have quite such a mess if the if there's little holes in here and the glue goes through yeah I'm put something down underneath so I don't have to clean up the mess oh the tool you can use anything this is just a burnishing tool back in the old days before um, everybody had a computer um, we used a lot of letter set type you know rub on lettering and and different stuff and this was a tool to use with letter set um, rub on lettering it's just called a burnisher I I suspect you can still buy one you don't need one um, to do what I just did you could use your um, bone folder yeah anything you could use your finger I just use this all the time but it's yeah it's just a burnishing tool you can still buy that lettering I'm not sure why you would but I still have a ton of it alright I'm gonna put the center down first because everything is gonna go from the center I'm just gonna glue the whole damn thing who cares we're just gonna work fast now because we got glue down and I just take a piece of chipboard or trash or whatever to spread it I suppose I can spread it with a. I'll just grab some of this. I could use a paintbrush. I mean, I, I honestly could use anything to spread this glue. All right, here we go. And I'm I'm. If I don't have enough, I'll add more. I put this on pretty darn generously. I don't want it real, real thin. I mean, I don't want it uber thick, but I don't want it real thin either. And right up to the edges. The edges are so important. Yeah, I have a lot of, I guess you'd call them old-fashioned tools because I've worked in the industry for so long that I, many of them I don't even know if you could get anymore. I need more glue on this side, I can tell. Yeah, use a credit card. For spreading glue and stuff like that, I generally will just get something that I can toss when I'm done. I don't, I'm don't. i not crazy about a bunch of cleanup when I'm done. So this, when I'm done, it served its purpose and now it's trash. And I might add more... Um, before I'm done and again I would use a bone folder try and get this as straight as you can because everything after this goes from here so straight is important and I'm just gonna let this smush out wherever it's gonna smush out now Okay, I'm thinking based on the line I drew originally, that's probably as straight as I'm going to get that. Keep a baby wipe or something too because you're going to get glue all over you. And the edges, get the edges good. That's probably the most important part. Because this, nobody's going to see it. It's going to be covered up.
and clean up the excess glue there along the edge because if that dried solid I wouldn't like it later. And I suppose some of this I just think about and do naturally from from having done book binding and stuff like that. Um, but there, your first piece is down. And it extends over the edge a little bit, and I'm cool with that. I'm very, very cool with that. Now I'm going to add a little bit more glue just to smush. Okay, I'm going to leave about, I don't think it's quite an eighth. Let's look. I don't leave a full eighth. I'm probably going to leave, um, I'm going to add some glue on this too. Um, it's not, it's somewhere between an eighth and sixteenth inch of space between the spine and this just enough for some relief okay it doesn't need to be much but it gives the paper somewhere to go when you open the book up that's really all it's doing so not quite an eighth of an inch yeah and I burnish this down really good this is when you want your bone folder or something like that any glue oozing out you're gonna clean up later so don't worry about it see it oozed out but I want this stuck pretty good because this is one, two of three plies Okay, are you following me so far? All right. I added a little bit of glue on here. Cuz if I don't it'll just ooze out if I don't need it but I want it stuck real real good and I'm gonna hold this one up here in just a second so you can see about the space that I'm leaving I might have left a little bit more on this side and it doesn't matter just as long as there's some space there And I'm really putting some ass on this, you guys. I'm burnishing this down as good as I possibly can. And um, PVA glue, the beauty of it is until it is completely dry, it's water soluble. So the excess on the other side, because I can see I'm puking it out on the edges now. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and clean this off. So I'm going to go ahead and take the book out now. Throw that away. Amazon still has the tool. You guys really don't need this tool. There's so many other tools out there. You really, really don't need to spend your money on that. If I didn't already own it, I wouldn't have it, I promise you. Okay, that's how easy cleanup was. Okay, alrighty then. Now, if I wasn't doing this in front of the camera, I would go ahead and let this dry um, before I started working on it anymore. Okay. I know, Karen, I'm covering it up, but I didn't like that one anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and clean up the edges of this. And the reason I can do this with a wet baby wipe is because I put matte medium on this. So the paper, ha you know, already has 
um, protection from the glue on it. But now I'm just cleaning up the excess. I thought that one was ugly, and I haven't had a chance to make any more because the um, cardstock just came yesterday, or the um, chipboard just came yesterday. So, oh, it is. All right, we'll get it. No big deal. Thanks, Jean. Okay, so I've got the excess glue off here now. But yeah, what I would normally do now, and I'm just going to go around all the edges and make sure they're stuck real, real good. Um, but what I would do now is set this aside and let it let this portion of it dry. And see, I'm pushing excess out now. And I can see there's one part here that didn't have glue. And I just grabbed it, you know, glommed onto it from the center and moved it out there and it glued down. So, chart pack adjustable burnisher. There you go. All right. So, it was chart pack lettering, not letter set. But you use the same tool for all of them. Okay. Now, can you see how leaving that relief right there has allowed the spine to give? and it's really established where your book is going to fold. Okay? So that's why probably the most important thing about making a book cover like this is leave that relief. And then make sure it's it's glued down really good. All your plies will stay together well. And it looks gross right now, doesn't it? dirty and nasty but it'll be beautiful when we're done and I'm not getting a whole lot of glue out of this edge down here which could I might try and pull some glue down from the center to here um, I, I can't stress enough that the corners and the edges you want glued Okay, so now I may just blow it real quick because um, I've got wet glue that I don't want to be playing in. But that's that's our book. It's coming together quickly. Yeah, I'm liking this one too, Eileen. I, this one's real pretty. And this one I stamped the um, solid card stock with that background stamp. So you can just see it here and there, and it's really pretty. Yes, I no, I'll just use matte medium, Picola. I'll just use the matte medium, and it should be pretty darn durable. And the thing I like about matte medium, honestly, is the matte finish. I, I'm not a glossy, sparkly, glimmery kind of girl. I'm just not. So... I'm just cleaning up excess glue so when I blow this to dry it a little bit before I have to start handling it I don't have puddles of glue now that corner oh nope it's alright got glue on my arm yeah I like this little bit of stamping oh what kind of chipboard um really any you know whatever you've got I ordered some more because I use it a lot and I'm gonna do some other projects with it but I just ordered this from Amazon you can just order chipboard this is natural medium weight 25 sheets 8 and a half by 11 I don't remember how much I paid for this but it's um this is actually pretty thick for something like this you don't need the medium weight you could probably get away with the lightweight Okay, Melody, go have a nice nap or nice sleep. I'm not even sure where you are. But, yeah, the medium weight, uh, I guess I'll take a sheet out and show you how thick it is. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but 25 sheets will last a while. But I use it for a lot of things. So cereal boxes and cracker boxes work. Yep. 
but this is this is pretty heavy heavyweight stuff this is going to be harder to make the faux leather out of so I might order some lightweight um, for that but I was going to make some other stuff with this too but you can just order chipboard any old kind of chipboard will work and I'm yammered so much I probably don't even I'm going to blow this for just a minute you can kind of see how this is going to come together now The cereal boxes and the cracker boxes are a little harder to make the faux leather out of because um, on the printed side they're they're they have a coat of um, ex like gar varnish on them so they're a little bit harder to turn into the faux leather. You need something absorbent for that. If we could use corrugate, Eileen, we would have to go into business for all the boxes we get from Amazon. I justify it by um, telling Robert that that's what he uses to start his fires with. Because he does the whole burning for the whole neighborhood. So that's why we get so many Amazon boxes so he can burn for the neighborhood. All right, I would rather not use this. Okay, here's the icky. Okay, now, use a straight edge, metal ruler, sharp knife, and that's, it's not completely dry, but I'm not going to be making a, a glue mess, and I need to get my phone out of here, because the other day I had to clean my phone for half an hour after I was done. Now, just use the edge of your book, that you've made sure was very straight to begin with as your guide for cutting off your excess and it cuts a whole lot better when it's dry that's why I'm saying I normally would let this dry I would not cut it moist or wet but with a sharp blade it's doing fine okay there's the edge can you see it absolutely perfect I love perfect if you guys have figured out that I'm a little tiny bit anal you would be right <laughs> hi cat again just trim off the edges the excess chipboard that you left And the reason I would normally have maybe trimmed this a little bit smaller is simply so that I didn't have that glue mess to deal with. But this is honestly the easiest way to do it. I'm going to have to fix that. My, my blade slipped a little bit, but that's okay. You're never going to know. So there you go. A plan is coming together. When you have a sharp blade, you do not have to push on an exacto. Just drag it along, and the sharpness of the blade will do your work for you. See this one down here? This is a little damp. It's a little puddly. That's all right. We're going to let the blade cut it anyway. If you didn't have a, a sharp blade, you couldn't do this. I promise you. You turned into me last night. <laughs> uh, that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing, Karen. Don't do that. Or you'll make asinine statements like I did at DD's this morning. All right, there's the book. Now, the one thing, like, see 
how the, the spine appears crooked, that is the crookedness of the weaving. But I think when you're actually using it, you'll never notice it because the front looks absolutely straight and the back looks absolutely straight. The, diff, the, the problem with this one is I put those 1 8 inch strips of the, um, the solid color on this edge so it makes it look not straight but believe me it is it's that 1 8 inch that's jacking with it your tabs are perfectly straight it makes a difference in the quality of the product and how much you're gonna love it down the road Karen so I'm glad you took the time to do it die cut machine I know Eileen would love everybody to have a die cut machine all right, now you have to remember this is still wet from all the glue. Um, and if the world was a perfect place, I would let this dry completely before I did anything else to it. But because you guys are here, I'm going to go ahead and finish it. And then I'll just, before I do too much else with it, I'll... Um, let it dry. Um, now Eileen and CB have different ideas of how this should be done okay because you I would normally like glue half of it do the relief glue the middle do the relief um, I'm gonna tell Eileen how she wants me to do it to get those relief in there perfectly because this has to be stuck on really, really good, too. Yeah, I like this book, too. So this will be the... I like this part of the paper especially a lot. And then this I like least, so... That's how it'll be. That'll be the inside. So... And there, this, it doesn't matter if there's straight or not, okay? And these papers, I did spray with um, fixative so that when I put the matte medium on it later, the colors won't move. So, but they had been sprayed with fixative and a coat of matte medium on them already. I'm going to do this. She's not answering me. So if she ever yells at me for ignoring her, remind her of this day, okay, please? All right, again, I'm just going to, and I probably don't need as much glue. What did I do with it? I lost my spreader, so I'll make another one. Yeah, it's just cardstock that I've turned into faux leather, um, Karen. Oops, I forgot to put my cleanup sheet down because I don't want it. Oh, you're ignoring me on purpose. Well, aren't you special? Wasn't it funny at Dee Dee's when she was <laughs> doing those shells this morning? Honestly, guys, I, I thought long and hard before I typed that one thing in there. And you know what I'm talking about. But I was sitting here laughing so hard, I was practically peeing myself. So I finally just had to share it. I'm going to do one panel at a time. That was so funny. Oh my God. And then what really cracked me up was when Packer Die came on and said that about Elliot, that Elliot was into all that. And it was like, yep, mentality of a seven year old boy. That would be me, of course. Okay. I'm not going to leave a whole lot excess because I really do like. Oops, it's this side. I really do like this part of the paper the best, so, but I've got to leave, leave a little excess for trimming. So,
Alright, and again, use your bone folder, anything you've got to go ahead and burnish it down. You want it stuck real good on that one panel. Try not to get wrinkles. Sometimes it's hard. Oops. See? Sometimes it's hard to keep the wrinkles out, but I tried my best. And air bubbles. Get the air bubbles out. Go ahead and work with it. But remember that this um, text weight paper, um, it's almost like when it absorbs the glue, it changes size a little bit. So we just press, press, press. If it gets a wrinkle, that's fine too. Okay, can you see that? This is text weight paper, um, Karen. Um, cardstock on the inside um, amplifies the issues of relief. So that's why I won't use cardstock on the inside because the really the relief is what is going to make this book usable or not usable. So I use text weight paper on that and then I'm going to do the relief next. And I've got, it's almost like it's got to be built in. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm saying. You know what I mean, Vern? Koala on per. Wow, very cool, Melody. Well, no wonder you have to go to bed. That's what I love about this, you know. How would I ever be chatting with somebody from Kuala Lumpur, really? And I'm probably not even pronouncing that right. She's probably just going, oh my God, what a dumb American. And I'd have to say, yup. And put a little bit of glue in the relief. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this one too and be ready for it. Okay? And I did not put a lot. All right? Oh, I could have, Dorothy, I could have done that, but this, I didn't like this, um, I thought it was ugly, and it, it was the faux leather <laughs> that I made the other day, and I'm, I wasn't crazy about it, so that's why I'm using it in here, because I just don't care. Alright, I'm going to gently, gently, so I don't tear it, force the paper down into that relief, okay, can you see me doing that, where I'm, encouraging the paper as gently as I can without tearing it and you can see I'm getting some wrinkles and I'm just gonna have to keep working with them and if they're there to stay that's fine too okay I'm very very gently encouraging that paper and I think you can see it with the shadows to go down into that relief there that's a good example of it right there Yes, text weight is copier paper. I'm sorry. Yes, text weight would be copier paper or 20, 20 pound. Um, I'm not sure what the equivalent um, GSM would be, but 20 pound stock in America, 2024. Um, this actually is cotton fiber paper, so it's going to be 24 pound. A little bit heavier than copier, but just anything that you would find in a book that's that's what they call text paper is book weight paper okay I'm gonna go ahead and encourage this to bend now while it's still wet so um, yeah so I know that there's ample relief in there for the bend 90 degree bend is all I need. Okay, now I'm going to do it with the next one. You see how I'm just gently easing it into there? 
take your time and do it right. If you push too hard, you're going to tear the paper. Um, and then after it gets in there good, then you can put some mass on it. So I've got both the reliefs now, and I'll go ahead and glue this down. And this side is probably um, where you're going to get more bubbles because you've warped the paper a little bit. Um, you know, Picola, it may not need to be um, leatherized. The reason I did that and the reason I will do it on all of them is because that chipboard is so darn stiff um, and I don't see how this book is a little bit pliable um, it has a little bit of give to it that's because of the leatherized chipboard if I just put the chipboard in there um, chipboard would have a tendency to want to break rather than give so that's why I just wanted it leatherized so that the book itself would have a little bit of give but it's entirely up to you you don't have to I just thought it would probably work a little bit better if um, if it gave a little bit but it doesn't matter I guess I could make one with just regular chipboard and see how it works but then it's gonna feel stiff like a book and I wanted this one a little bit just a little bit of give on it Okay, and the leather chipboard is absorbing some of this glue, which is fine too. All right, now I'm going to go ahead, and I've got it really well covered from edge to edge. Now, here we go. I'm going to keep that relief. I don't know why, but I can do it better from this way. Okay, I'm going to emphasize that relief one more time before I smush this paper down. Alright, the relief's in there. I know it is. Now I can go ahead and smush the paper down. You could actually use the chipboard for the the leatherized chipboard for the entire cover because the leatherized chipboard is cool. I would definitely cover it with um, matte medium or something um, and let it really, really soak in so that the plies of the chipboard don't want to separate because you got to remember chipboard is also either plies or compressed um, paper. So, and the biggest hassle here is getting rid of the bubbles and the wrinkles because as soon as it's moist it wants to wrinkle up. So there you go. Now you've seen how to ply paper. And I got wrinkles back here but I knew I probably would. It's almost impossible not to get wrinkles, you guys, when you put that much glue on. Yeah, the, I think the lighter weight chipboard is definitely easier to use. Try it first with, the, if you've bought the glycerin and you've already got the investment of the glycerin, um, try it with a paper bag first. Because um, I did some with just paper bag. Um, and look at, I mean, it, it's very um, paper-like, but it has a really cool texture. And this is just a paper bag that you get at the grocery store. But it feels really, really cool. Now, if I put matte medium on this, it would make it a lot, lot, lot more durable. I promise you. No, do not leatherize your composition cover. I wouldn't do that. I'd just slap the um, woven paper right on it. Okay. 
And now because of the moisture, the cover's wanting to curl up a little bit. So just work with that. It's fine. Now I could go ahead and um, set this under a pile of books or something. I didn't, Eileen's, and I won't, I didn't on that other one either. I just let it dry and worked with it. But stuff like this doesn't bother me. I mean, I could do this crap all day long. And I don't want glue all over, over everything, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up any place that glue might have gotten out. I'm going to go ahead and blow it dry right now a little bit so I can trim it off. And then I'll show you how to... Um, punch the holes. Um, Grammy, she asked what the ratio of glycerin to water is. I use about a six to one, one part glycerin to six part water. Um, but really, it's one of those things that's not critical. Um, it's really just getting the glycerin in the paper fibers. Probably before I come back on again, Picola, I will have already covered a composition book like that. I think that is a fabulous idea, actually. Now, I would at this point um, go ahead and do an entire another cover um, co coat of matte medium on this front and back. I hate some of these wrinkles. And the more it dries, the more you can get the wrinkles out. So, okay. And I've only got about 30 minutes more until Joycey comes on. Uh, that glue is still pretty wet, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it out. And I know I say this a lot. I'm kind of like Dee Dee. When you're using an X-Acto and a ruler, always use a metal ruler. If you use plastic, you'll cut into it. Believe me, at some point, you will cut into it. I've done it. And then you'll ruin your ruler. And you definitely want that a clean cut. You don't want a rip. A rip would be really hard to mend at this point. And I got glue. The excess glue that's sitting here just wadded up on my X-Acto blade. Just cut it, clean it off. Now, at this point, too, um, 
if I wanted to, for example, ink the edges, if I wanted to make this look a little bit more distressed or whatever, I could ink these edges and make it look distressed, old. Um, the paper that I cut off to make tabs, oh, I just threw it away. <laughs> that actually is not a bad idea, Eileen. I'll save that piece. The rest of it, I'm not saving. I, I don't. Some people would save stuff like that. I I don't because one thing I've learned is if you keep stuff like that, you have to find a place to put it. You have to organize it, and then worst of all, you have to remember where you put it after you put it there. That's where my whole plan falls apart. Okay. Not too terribly wrinkled, but it's got a few. But it's okay. And I can sit here and work with that as much or as long as I want. I want it to be nice because I know this is going to one of you guys. I really so I want it to be real nice. And I'll stress the relief again and again and again. See, if I did this with the paper that was dry, I'd just tear it. But you, can you see how nice that relief is now? There you go. We've got pretty much a finished book. One edge, one side of the book, I don't know if you guys can see, one side of this book is slightly longer than the other. I'm not going to worry about that. Because when you're using it, you won't know. Because it'll be full of beautiful, fun stuff. Next thing is find the center of your spine up and down. So remember, we our measurement was six and three quarters, um, which is going to be. Let's just do some math real quick. What three and three eighths is going to be? The center this way and the center across the spine. We did a one inch spine so it's going to be a one inch right there. So when I found the center horizontally and vertically, that's where I'm going to punch a hole to put the elastic for the binding, you know, the elastic that wraps around as a closure. Okay. Up here, and I'm just going to use this one because this one seems to work pretty well. I'm going to come up a quarter inch, and then I'm going to do a quarter inch for the elastic to stick out. Can you guys see that, how that elastic is right there? Okay. I'm going to have an eighth of an inch showing. So, again, at the center of the spine, which is going to be a half of an inch, and a quarter inch up from the bottom. I'm going to have a hole half inch up quarter inch half inch at the halfway mark so yep a pretty good eye there okay this is when it gets to be a pain in the butt, okay, is punching the holes. Now, if it was leather, I would use like an awl, um, and I suppose I could do that. I'm going to use just my needles like I always do because it'll give Eileen something to yell at me about, and I might pound that other thing through, but okay. So when you've got your measurements, okay, quarter inch up from the bottom, a quarter inch up from that, on either end, quarter inch up from there, quarter inch in from there, 
and one right in the center. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use the needle to punch that through. Now this is why you would want this really dry because when it's moist like this it's going to want to tend to give more um, but yeah I'm going to go ahead and do this. I am not however going to put the elastic I need it. I have a Japanese screw punch. I don't want that big a hole I mean is the deal. Where is my Japanese screw punch? I thought it was in this drawer. Um, yeah, I have one, Eileen. Hmm, wonder what I did with it. This will work fine. And other people don't have Japanese screw punches, so we're just going to use a needle and a pokey tool or whatever you've got. Because I could make perfect holes. I mean, I have the tools to make absolutely perfect holes of multiple sizes. And I'm using a real skinny hat pin one to get the hole started and see how the book is wanting to give a little bit. I don't necessarily want it to do that. Okay, I'm going to make the holes a little bit larger now. But I, want, I don't want the holes real big. I really don't. Alright. See the, on my all, the smallest hole I've got. It's like a sixteenth inch. I don't want to use that. I'll just use that other thing. I forgot. I still have that elastic thread too. So I got tons of colors you guys. Look at all this. Woohoo! Alright. I haven't used my Japanese screw punch in forever. And it's still in its package. I remember that. <laughs> That doesn't look like I got it centered. If I didn't center that, that's going to make me so damn mad. No, it's pretty good. Duh. Optical illusions going on here. Just keep forcing something bigger through it. That's my theory. Because I really don't want an excessively big hole. Hang on. I'm forcing a bigger... I'm using like a skewer thing to force a bigger hole. Now it'll be fine. Yeah, I've used it. I mean, I used it a couple times, but you know, it's like anything else. If it takes getting a tool out, I'm, I'm probably going to fail at it. Unless it's one of my tools I keep right here beside me. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. I am going to find it though because now I'm really curious what the heck happened to it. What did I do with it? Alright, there. Now I've got the holes in there. You can see them. So just punch a hole. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Hey, stream, and I'll call you back later. Okay, bye. Okay, so I've got the holes here, hole in the center, hole here. Now, I've got to get um, the elastic through those holes. This is where it gets really interesting and fun. I am going to look for my... Um, you know, I don't want to do this really yet because I want to put a coat of matte medium on there. I guess I could show you how to do it and then not worry about it. Okay, what color, I think I've already decided, but I'll ask you guys. What color elastic do we want with this cover? I think I want this color. Can you guys see the color representation on this camera? Sucks. Socks. 
And Joyce is on in 15 minutes. Has anybody seen any word from Joycey? If you don't hear, generally she's going to stream. So I'm assuming she'll be on in 15 minutes. No, Cat Michaels does not sell magicals. You can get them directly from Lindy's um, Stamp Gang website. Or um, I got mine from Amazon. Or what was that other place, that link you sent me, Eileen, that I, I ended up not using? Dark blue, orange. See, I, I'm thinking this um, teal or turquoise color is going to look really pretty on this. Call me cuckoo. Okay, there's that end. Where's this end? This is the, okay, let me, because it's almost the color of the background stamping. Can you see that? I think that's definitely bright green or yellowish. I'm thinking the teal. I don't like the yellow, I don't think yellow, nope, don't want yellow. Um, and see the inside I don't even, I don't even care about. But this is more that color, the dark green blue color. Yeah, I think this one is good. Okay, and to determine the amount of um, elastic you need, <clears throat> okay, let me show you on this one. Um, you want one main, I'm just going to have to take the whole thing apart. Hang tight, ladies, hang tight. Okay. Okay. The binding elastic are the two pieces you see here. So you need enough to go from end to end twice plus some ties. So the way I usually figure that is I go the length of the book about three times. And I end up throwing some away, but honestly, with elastic, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So, yeah, three times is what I'm going to do. Oops, 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 oops. You like the yellowish green one? I think this one's going to be better, Jean. Sorry, I'm going to overrule you. And if I didn't do that one, I probably would do this rose-colored one. <laughs> I don't know. People's different people's tastes are different. Okay, so let I got to think about this again. I always have to think about it before I start doing it. Um. Okay, I figured it out in my head. I'm trying to um, get the elastic through this needle. I sh when I cleaned out my storeroom, I put all my um, upholstery needles and stuff like that in a great big bin. Now I hate to go down and open up the bin. But I have a better needle for this. With a bigger eye. I know exactly where it is. Tie it on Roxy's tail. You are mean, Eileen. I love the way you think, girl. <laughs> I try not to be mean to poor Roxy. All right. I may just not even end up doing this on stream because you've seen this one now. Okay. You go down in this hole. Okay. Down in this hole. Leave a tail down in this hole, up in this hole, all the way to the end, to this hole, back up, bring it in the middle, tie it, and that's how you get this center um, elastic. Okay? Uh, in that center hole, you have to um, 
bring it through twice. And the reason I don't want to do this is because if I go ahead and get the elastic threaded in this, I have to take it all back out to put matte medium because I want one more coat of matte medium on this whole thing. So I'm not going to thread this elastic, but you can see. Just put the loop the elastic, pull it through, tie it, and just adjust it until you like the tightness of it around the book. Okay? So that's how I'm going to show you that. And this one, I got a big bubble right there, and it makes me mad. Okay? And then the way you, and I've shown this before, and I'll do it again as many times as you guys want. Um, take your, your insert, okay? Find the center, and I don't, um, I don't bind mine. These are just loose pieces of paper. But that's the beauty of this elastic binding, is the elastic holds the paper in there. But say I want to take this sheet of paper out, and draw on it, I can take it out of the book and then put it back in. So I don't bind mine, but if you want yours bound, buy a long arm stapler or bind it. I just don't. Okay, and I showed how to make these six pocket folders, and I have not taped this one yet. Um, there's a, a video on how to make these six pocket folders for your um, traveler's book. Um, and actually, I saw this originally um, on a YouTube from a pocket full of vintage. It's called a Six Pocket Folder, I believe. Okay, Joyce is coming on. Okay, I'll just finish this up and we'll call it a day. Okay, slide one half of that underneath your middle book or wherever. I mean, you don't have to put it where I'm putting it. I just put it there. Cut another piece of elastic the size of your books and make a loop and that's how you can add more books. And by doing this, by having more of these, you can add as many books as you want. And there are thousands of videos on YouTube of how to do this that I don't need to be doing another one. Okay, And then just slide the books with the elastic in them over that middle book and there you go that's your binding system now you can use this um, cover for as long as you want and just replace the inserts that's the beauty of Traveler's Notebooks and I love them so um, Joyce's name on Ustream is the Frugal Eclectic I believe Eileen will put a um, link in for you so there you go. That's how I make the covers. Not hard. Anybody can do it. I will put the binding on after um, this dries and I get another coat of matte medium on it. And I will go ahead and finish the others. I've got one done and I've got, let's see, two, three, four, five, six to finish. And now I'm going to have to weave some more paper because I want to put a cover on my composition book. I'm going to have woven magical papers on everything. I'll have to make a toilet paper holder for one or something. I don't know. But that's the book. Front with this color closure on it. And the neat thing, too, is if you want to add charms or whatever, like on most of my Midoris, I have charms on them. Um, so, yeah, you can add a charm to this elastic. So, there you go. If you have any questions, you can just email me or don't email me. Um, I'm not good with email. I don't read it often. Um, tweet me or something. You're going to do them dragonfly good. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. And um, probably on next Monday's stream, I will be giving these away. Okay? So if you want a chance to win one of these, I would plan on being at my next week's stream. <laughs> Eileen, you kill me, girl. 
So go on over to Joyce's. You will laugh over there. I promise you. Yeah, I could use the the scraps for bookmarks, and I'll think about doing a um, pen loop. Eileen, you've just made the whole process a lot harder now. This one obviously didn't get one, right? Oops. Um, I come on at um, 1 o'clock Eastern on Mondays, Karen. 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central. So, yeah, be here Monday because I'll give them away Monday. Probably four of them. Oh, Kat, you have an appointment on Monday. Oh, I'm so sorry. But by then, I want this mess out of here, you guys. I cannot begin to express to you how tired I am of this mess. I'm ready for it to go away. So, Monday it is. Head over to Joyce's. You will get a laugh over there. I will be over there shortly. I think I'm going to take a few minutes and make myself a BLT. You can be jealous all you want. Okay. Love you guys. See you next time.